Today, we actually traded it this KH. It's a 75C, so it's the premium 75 horsepower tractor. Uh, it's very low hours. It's like under 100 hours. It's, it's a 2021 model, so we think it's a pretty fair comparison. And, we, and we're going to compare it to our 4707, which is what we have in that category. Okay, I'm in the cab of this Case IH uh, 75C tractor. I believe this to be kind of how they come spec, more or less standard, right? Typical. I don't think there's a ton of options, maybe a, a third remote and things like that. But as far as most of the controls, I, I think this is kind of what you get. Um, and so I want to kind of compare and contrast some of the things that you that I notice when I jump in this. And obviously, I've got more experience with with our our Massey product lineup. But but what are some of the differences? What are some of the trade offs? And I think first and foremost, I actually don't mind this cab. This cab is is one of the. Uh, uh, it's obviously it's the same as I believe it's, it would be the Workmaster uh, New Holland. It's basically an identical tractor, just a different color. Uh, I don't even think there's maybe a, some finite differences on the controls and things. But big picture, I, I think it's it's more or less the same as a Workmaster 75 New Holland. Um, I do like the fact the buddy seat comes standard. I think that's a nice feature. The cab does feel smaller than the Massey. I'm kind of interested now that I've spent some some more time in this tractor, what what it's going to feel like when I jump back in the cab of the Massey 4707, just to kind of you know kind of compare and contrast it. It feels a little tight, and I don't know that some of that's probably not because it's a little bit bulky, but like this door. I'm not sure, I'm a pretty big guy, but I'm not really sure how easy that's gonna to be to use. And it's not easy on a lot of tractors. I'm not trying to knock it there, but it's just, I feel like because of the placement of where the joystick is and the, and the shifter, it'd be really hard to, to utilize that door without, you know, I don't know, I suppose, even, even then it's just, there, there's just not much room. Um, even with the, the steering wheel tilted all the way up, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to use that door for much. Um, so, but other than that, I mean, it's, it's, the layout isn't horrible. Um, it's, it's, it's decent. And so, you know, there are a couple things you notice right off the bat, you know, a little bit difference in the shifting. So on a Massey, we're going to have six gears and two ranges where this is four gears and three ranges, which is pretty typical. I believe green and orange, I think are, are kind of in that same wheelhouse in a comparable tractor, except for I believe the 76. 60 Kubota is just an eight speed. So I think it's two ranges and four gears. Could be wrong about that, don't quote me. Uh, but I know that the M4071 is gonna have uh, kind of the same setup. Whereas a Massey, we're gonna have the six speeds and the two ranges. That's obviously a little nicer if you're working, say say you're in that low range working in the field, you know, you've got a few more gears to ch choose from without having to stop and shift a range. Um, but where the shifter and everything is laid out is not bad i don't mind it i like to say the only thing i notice is how bulky it feels on the front of that console um just kind of being out there so this is one of the first things you notice it's, it's just kind of bulky there the uh but like i say in the range shifter is not a bad placement somebody could maybe argue that that's even a better placement than massey massey's going to be back alongside the back of the seat you know you don't have to shift it as much but it is it is kind of further back it's not bad it's just this is a little bit a little bit more forward we've uh we've also got so this has got two remotes um you can obviously add a third which is i think standard for all this kind of class of tractor um joystick is here integrated i will i will give case points for this um it looks like they've already included both switches although i don't hear it click but uh they've already included both switches for a live third uh hydraulics on the front which on a massey it's something that we have to put on in the shop they give us the one for the diverter valve well we add a second button for the live third so it's kind of nice that it's already done there but it's it's maybe kind of not that big a deal because it, it doesn't it's not that major of an issue to, to change out um but a few things so it's it's a mechanical hitch so you've still got kind of the old mechanical controls for the for the the draft control and the hitch control down here beside you it's not quite as handy i don't think as where the massey is kind of up here on the side console and it is mechanical and we'll talk a little bit about some of the drawbacks there um i know some of you are probably listening and thinking like ah hey a mechanical sounds great right simpler and you're not I, mean, I, I understand where you're coming from but you do lose some of the functionality as far as you know we can't use we can't put switches on the back for controlling your three point and so it's it's definitely a cheaper system to go mechanical um 
So there are some differences there. It does have this quick, quick engagement for the up and down of the three point, which is kind of cool um, right here. So that that's kind of cool. But overall, it's it's just a little more antiquated of a design. Um, and like I say, it's, it's not super convenient where this position is because I can't see what I'm doing. I'm having to kind of do it by feel unless I look way down here and then look. And now you can set your little knobby thing to tell you to tell it where to go. But if I was trying to make an adjustment, I'm just kind of doing it by feel, which is fine. But I, it's it's just it's kind of tucked in there in, a, in an awkward place, in my opinion. Um, I, I also noticed right off the bat, so switch wise, uh, we have a four wheel drive, electronic four wheel drive switch, which is the, the same as the mass he's gonna be. But the differential lock isn't here, right? So there's no no electronic differential lock on this, which means there's no automatic differential lock. Um, if you cruise on down, you'll see that right, coming out of the middle, right below the seat, there's a pedal. And so this is kind of the old mechanical style of differential lock engagement. Not bad, it's just, it's a little nicer feature to kind of have it up there. Um, just just a, a little more modern of a tractor. Uh, moving up, it's obviously got your AC controls right there, which that, that's great. Uh, I did notice, and the Massey's kind of loud on the higher fan speeds as well. So I'm gonna be really interested to go back and look at this video side by side and see which one is louder, but that's max speed. And it's, it's pretty loud in the cab, and if you have any throttle at all, it, it begins to get really loud in the cab. Uh, and I believe it's louder than the Massey, but it'll be interesting to kind of compare the two. It might not be as, as defined as, as I think it is. Um, the AC does seem to work pretty good though. I don't, I don't mind it at all and it does cool well. Um, so like I say, I, I don't mind uh, the way this is done. The, the headlights, no big deal there either. You've got just kind of a turn knob. The more lights you want, the further you turn the knob, whereas Massey is it, it switches. Uh, rear and front uh, wiper or you know the, the windshield washers are all right there in the pillar so there's a lot of similarities like oh in the in the PTO engagement on this tractor is mechanical as well um, which kind of rules out a little bit the kind of that soft start engagement of the PTO that we come to expect on the Massey where they pulse with modulate that signal I suppose you can kind of do that yourself by slowly engaging it but I would probably be a little bit concerned as to burning up a clutch just because it's not designed to do that I don't think um, so mechanical PTO engagement it's a little further back it's not super comfortable where it's placed versus up here um, but it is like I say just a, you just it's just a little simpler more mechanical right you don't get as many bells and whistles it's just kind of just kind of mechanical um, moving on I noticed this the steering wheel it, it has tilt which is cool um, I did say earlier like I talked about there's I'll bet there's not six inches between this joystick and this wheel and the steering wheel when it's folded all the way up which I don't know why that I mean I guess the door is truly just an emergency door which is fine um, but it doesn't have any telescopic feature and so when we get in the Massey I'll kind of show that off but uh, on the Massey that the steering wheel can tilt or telescope which depending on who's running it and things it's kind of a nice little feature to have to be able to kind of kind of do that and, and telescope that so you get a little bit more functionality um the the shuttle lever big old bulky shuttle lever hey it's great one thing you don't get you don't get the ability to control the uh the shuttle right so there's uh you don't you can't tune how you like that shuttle to where softer or or a stiffer shuttle that's one thing you notice pretty quick there's there's not that control and i have not been able to find anything in the dash that would let me do that either so i it's my belief that there's that this is not not an adjustable shuttle um, sensitivity kind of thing. Uh, and while I'm on that point, there's there's no D clutch button on the gear shift either, so you're going to be hitting the clutch pedal. Whereas on the Massey, we do have a D clutch button. You just push the button and you grab another gear. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into that one. But there are some differences that you notice there as far as you know just the features and things. Um, kind of moving on around, park brake's basically in the same position. It just overall this cab just feels tighter um i can't wait to kind of jump in there and make sure that i'm confirming my, my 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 thoughts but it feels different this one also has the vizio roof for the i guess i don't know what case calls it on a massey they call it a vizio roof i don't know if that's standard or not i'm not really sure i think this is a 2021 model we just traded for it it's got like 149 hours on it the guy wasn't happy with a few things on it uh, uh ride was one of them uh 
lift. You know, there were just a few things he didn't really like about it, and so he, he owned it less than a year and decided to, to kind of move move on to, to a Massey 4707, so he traded it for more or less the same horsepower, but I think the Massey Ferguson gives you just a little bit more more uh, power, or not maybe not even power, just it's just more tractor, right? Um, so, other than that, I mean, you've got all the controls that you're looking for. Um, it, a little bit different layout, a little bit different control structure, but overall, I mean, it's it, it's got the things to do the job. It's just um, it's just a little clunky, I guess, is my opinion. And I'm actually gonna flip the camera around because I also want you to see what the view looks like out the front, and I want to look at some of the some of the loader speeds and things like that because looking out the front, it's definitely got a different view than what the Massey is. So we'll flip around and take a peek at it from that angle. Okay, so looking at the tractor heading forward, um, say you're doing loader work, you're driving the tractor, whatever. One thing you notice right off between the two tractors is you jump in this one, uh, which is the case, uh, and it is it. It feels like the hood is significantly shorter. I'm guessing the wheelbase is. I have not done those measurements yet. I'm guessing the wheelbase is is shorter but it, it just feels like the hood is kind of smashed in there, but really wide. And so there's there's no real view of your the inside of your tires. Everything is kind of completely blocked off. It's just tight, right? Um, also, the, the, the loader is just super bulky. Um, it, and there's, or I, there may be other loader options. I know Massey on the 4707, we have three different loader options. Um, I'm gonna compare this to a 931X loader because I believe it's the, the fairest comparison to what this tractor is. I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want to compare a tractor that's got the nicest loader that probably costs a lot more with with this tractor, which doesn't. But um, so we're gonna go with the base loader on it. Uh, but the the loader frame is really bulky and it makes it kind of hard to see uh, much of anything. Uh, that's one of the first things that you notice. Another thing that I noticed um, is trying to when I'm operating the loader. This is an idle. I'm gonna run it through the full stroke because I think I'm gonna time it later just for my knowledge and I might put it in the comments or something. Uh, at idle, this loader is incredibly slow. And I don't remember off the top of my head what the specs for this tractor is in terms of hydraulic flow, but I'm going to look that up because now I'm kind of inquisitive. But that is it at, at idle which is, I think it idles about 800 RPMs. And then at max throttle, which is like 2400 or 2450 or somewhere in there, it does, it looks like 2400. It does speed up, which is nice. Um, and, and maybe it's just perception. So I'm gonna time it against, I'm gonna time it against the Massey and see what that looks like. Um, but anyway, kind of just summarize them in the cab. Uh, one thing I, I mentioned earlier was the fact that it doesn't have an adjustable shuttle, which that's at idle. Now, let me, I'm going to pick a gear. I'm actually going to, we're going to do this test in second gear and, and, or I mean, second range, third gear, which would be seventh, I think, seventh at idle. It's a little jerky, but it's, it's not a horrible shuttle. So the fact that you can't adjust it. Um, while that's unfortunate, it's not bad, but let's, let's try it at about. So when you get it up to, let me put it at, let me put it at 1800 RPMs here. When you get it up to 1800 RPMs, it does get a little jerky. Um, and there is no way to tune that, so that just is what it is. But that's one thing you do notice. So if you're doing a lot of loader work, you might notice that, hey, it's it's probably less than ideal to not be able to make adjustments to that. Um, so other than that, that kind of wraps up what we're doing here in the cab. Um, we're gonna jump in the Massey and see what that's like. All right, so now we're up in the cab of this this 4707. This is a 2022 model, so it's pretty much the same year model, but you know, obviously one year newer. This tractor is actually sold to a man, uh, but it's it's very similar to what to what the tractor that the guy traded the case in on. Um, 
with the exception of these three switches. I'm not gonna talk about those till the end because I wanna keep it a little bit fair. This is a really nice option and I think you should consider it. But we're gonna leave that to the end and we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, I think I started with controls on the other tractor, so I'll kind of do the same. Um, as we talked about, we have a, a two range shifter right here, um, and then our six speeds are right here. And then on the front of our joystick, we have our D-clutch button, which our D-clutch button is what's gonna allow us to shift without clutching, right? So you just push that button in and grab another gear. It does the same thing as pushing the clutch. That's a very, very, very nice feature, and it's definitely worth, worth considering this tractor just on that alone. Um, but as far as everything else is laid out, we do have an engine memory switch. So our engine A switch, so when it's time to throttle up the tractor, we can, we can you know, preset that engine A speed, so that's nice. I didn't see that on the case, and I'm probably gonna go back and look just to make sure I'm not wrong, but I don't think the case had that. Um, you've got the PTO engagement is just a, a simple rocker switch, and this is a two-speed PTO. I don't think the case is. So in this one, I have a 540 or a 540 Eco. The 540 Eco would come in pretty handy. Let's say you're doing a spraying or something that's just not a very big, shred, maybe a six foot shred or something like that. Something maybe just a little undersized for the for what the tractor is. Um, but it is electronic engagement. And it, I don't know if you probably can't hear it, but it's got a little pulse to it because it's pulse with, mo pulse with modulating the signal to try to soft start engage the PTO so we don't just hammer it on and, and, and really, really, you know, stress those implements. So that's a nice feature. I like the electronic engagement of the PTO, especially if it's something you're kicking on and off. Maybe you've got a, a baler or something that needs to needs the PTO off when you kick the bale out or, or something along those lines. But if you're in a situation, or, or let, let's say you're, you're doing some augering on the back or, or whatnot, or spraying, like you go back, you're going back and forth with your sprayer and you're like on, off, on, off. It is nice to be able to, to not have to, to reach down there and do that lever. The differential lock, so it's automatic differential lock. Um, and so when we turn that on, obviously it's a switch and we can we can flip it on and now we've got differential lock, turn it off, it's off. Um, it's a little nicer than doing the old foot pedal thing. Uh, we're focused on the road ahead. Maybe you're working your throttle pedal and so you don't have a free, free foot. You know, say you're trying to get out of a, a, a soft spot or, or you're, you're plowing extra hard and it's pulling. You might be using your foot pedal for something, whether it be the turning brakes or whether it be the throttle pedal. Um, and so have it, having the ability to not, uh, to, to kick that differential lock out automatically is, is uh, or, or with a switch, I should say, is, is pretty darn nice. And so I like that a lot. I think that's a big upgrade. And that's what you're gonna see when you get into these large, when you get into larger tractors. I say larger tractors. This is comparable to the 75C, but uh, anything you get up over 100 horsepower, that's gonna be standard. We have a standard in our 75 horse tractor, uh, four wheel drive. Um, it's so you click that on and it goes to what's the automatic mode um, and so you can and if you push and hold it it'll go to full time up the four wheel drive but I like just the automatic mode and so when you need four wheel drive it will disengage or engage it and also um, when uh, you know if, if you ever use the brakes or you set the park brake or whatnot it's going to engage the four-wheel drive for you but there's three modes to this four-wheel drive that's really nice um, versus just a switch and it's on you know having that automatic having that uh, selective four-wheel drive it just gives you some more functions um, so other than that uh, we've got the placement for another hydraulic valve. One cool thing, it's relatively simple, but it, let's say you're running something that needs full hydraulic flow. Um, you can lock your little valves right here into full flow. They're also, they're detent valves, uh, which is nice, so you can detent them. Um, but you can push them forward and you can lock them into full flow, which is kind of handy for a lot of things. So so don't, don't uh, just just know that that's a, that's a pretty nice piece of the puzzle that we got there. Um, with the exception, so on from that, maybe I should have opened this up so we can see a little bit better to peel this off. Um, 
couple things on the back of this joystick. So when we start moving around, we've talked about the shuttle, and I guess when we talked about shifting, let's go ahead and talk about the shuttle, and then we'll move on to the joystick. Um, with our shuttle lever, we get a little bit more functionality than, than with the case, or with the Deer, or the New Holland, or the Kubota, in the fact that, let's say, I'm just gonna put it in the low gear, we just want to stop for a little bit. We can just pull straight up on that shuttle lever. We do not have to go back to neutral to stop the tractor. It will declutch in the in the lifted position. On the case, it's just you, you got what you got, forward, reverse, and neutral, right? So we have a little extra functionality. But we also have the ability to uh, to uh, adjust that shuttle. So if you don't want that shuttle to happen quite as hard, you can certainly adjust it. Um, joystick and I will correct myself on something I thought there was more room between these two things I think it's just because it doesn't look as bulky but the joystick here uh, we don't have much more room than, the, than what the case had as far as access to that door I think it just feels like you do uh, but you really don't and so because I think like say with that it doesn't have that big bulky console up here it's just a little more streamlined and it is easier to push out of the way and easier to access that door I will say that but the, the, the distance that's given, even when the steering wheel is tilted and telescoped all the way in, is, is pretty similar to what the case did. So I wanted to clear that up because I hadn't really noticed that before. It just feels more open. In fact, the whole cab feels more open. Uh, and I think it's just because of the way everything's laid out. Most, most of the controls are kind of pulled back and we don't have that console sticking up. So you've got more floor room. Um, you know, obviously our buddy seat is also still standard. You just, it's a, it feels like a larger cab. I've not done the measurements, so I'm not going to say it absolutely is, but I'm just, from what I can tell, we've got a larger cab. It's, it's just a little bit of an upgrade. Um, joystick though, our joystick, they've kind of got that integrated one. We've got this kind of tall lever, the joystick, um, and you've got a, uh, you've got a couple different switches on here. You've got a switch here if you put the factory converter in. There's a hole there if you want to put a second switch in if you want the live third. And then there's a, a toggle switch if you want to do the uh, if you want to do the the on off valve for the for the uh, if you had like a soft ride loader. So any of our FL series loaders are going to have that soft ride on this 931X. You're not going to have it. And like I say, I think this is the more comparable loader to what the case has. And so I wanted to kind of keep it as keep it as kind of fair as we possibly could. A um, little bit more functionality in the dash. Obviously, it, it keeps track of a little bit more stuff. Other than that, it seems to be a little bit cleaner of a dash, but uh, it's I don't know that that's a big selling feature one way or another. I don't think that's going to be night and day different. Um, AC controls are up here. That's nice. It is electronic hitch. We didn't talk about that, but compared to what the, the case was where it had levers down here with your draft control and everything, our draft control is a simple knob uh, because it is an electronic hitch and our, our three point control is right here uh, as well as a little stopper there. So it's kind of nice to have that right there. And obviously when, when we have that electronic hitch, we get more functionality like we're able to have the switches on the fenders to, to raise and lower the three point. So a little bit nicer setup. Kind of moving up uh, the, as far as the, you know, your wipers, your, your rear, your rear washer is up on a switch. Your front washer is up on the steering column. Um, you've got some floodlight switches there that are up, up top there. Kind of pretty similar. It's not a knob. It's just switches. I, I mean, I don't think it really makes a huge difference one way or the other. Um, but just kind of in summary, we, we, we have the ability to, to change our shuttle. We have a, a shuttle lever that does more, right? So we have the ability to declutch on the shuttle lever. We have the engine A speed. We have electronic control of most everything in the cab. We have a declutch button on our gear shift. There's just, if, if you're not catching the drift, there's a ton, ton more features in the 4707. I think we've got a little bit bigger cab. Um, there's just a lot more to it. Uh, noise level, it, it actually, it's, when you start turning that fan up, it gets pretty loud in here as well. So, I mean, it's it, that's probably negligible. Maybe I just don't notice it because I, I run it more on two than I do on four. Um, the engine seems to be quieter. Uh, I'm, I'm redlining or I'm, I'm maxing out the engine at uh, what looks to be 22.5, I guess, or yeah, 22.5. So it actually spins a little bit slower at max RPMs. Um, and then idle is at 800, so it's the same there. But having that engine speed control is nice, and, and, the, and the lockouts for the valves, I think that's kind of a nice feature. Um, so overall, it's 
all the same functionality, just a different way of controlling it, uh, but we, we add a few features that, that Case doesn't give you. I want to flip the camera around, show you a couple things on what it looks like to be driving this tractor, um, as well as uh, some speed of the loader and things that uh, some observations that I made. So. Okay, so we flipped the camera around. I wanted to kind of give you a view of kind of how, what you'd be looking at from from the operator's seat. Um, it it feels a little bit more open. You probably notice the hoods a little bit longer. It just it just I think like say a little longer wheelbase, a little bit bigger tractor, a little bit more weight. I think that's that's kind of where we're where we, where you see that like say that longer hood. It's just a little bit more tractor. Um, this is the 931X loader, so it's it's not as big of the the frame it still lifts 2200 pounds now we should i should specify that's 2200 pounds 31 inches in front of the pivot pin most manufacturers are trying to throw a pivot pin measurement at you but that's, that's really not an accurate way to measure it um so i do like the visibility a little bit more um it's kind of hard to maybe see down i wanted to kind of get centered up with the hood but I can see the inside of my front tires. I've just got a little bit more visibility down beside the hood. I honestly think that probably gives me more access from a serviceability standpoint. I might try to dig into that a little bit later and see how that looks. Um, but a couple other things I wanted to show you was the speed at which the loader goes up. And so currently I am at idle. I'm at 800 RPMs. And so I don't know how much faster, but I know it's faster. And the other thing I noticed I, I, wanted, I want to put a tape measure on it and see, but this loader just seems to go so much higher. Um, and I could, that could be misleading. Also drops much, much faster. Um, and then max throttle, which on this tractor is 22.5 or 2250. Um, that loader is cooking. Um, I think part of that's got to do with the, uh, I think part of that's got to do with the uh, the 17.7 gallons of flow that this tractor has. It just it's a quicker loader. Um, but I think I think like say I think you'll notice the speed at which the the, shut, the the loader works, and I think that's a real benefit. So doing a little shuttle shuttle work on the other tractor, I had it in seventh gear, and I don't really know the ratios, but I want to kind of keep in line with what we were doing there. And I wanna show you kind of, this is an idle. Um, that's with the sensitivity turned all the way up. This is with it turned all the way down. So you notice it gets, I call it lazier, but it's really smoother. Um, I kind of like maybe a medium, like a like kind of right down the middle as far as the shuttle goes. I think it's a, a good mix of smooth, but it's also the it's, it's also quick quick enough response. Uh, always important to test these things with a little RPM and see how they look because the shuttle does change. It's based on hydraulic flow, so the shuttle is going to change. So this has turned all the way down, nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Now when I turn the shuttle all the way up, it's still pretty smooth. It's, it's not jerky. Like I felt like that case had kind of a, a jerk to it, but it, it does get jerkier, right? Which is why having that knob is such a big deal. So I can turn that down and we're in good shape. Um, so just just some things to think about when you're out when you're out shopping. Uh, I do believe that this Massey gives you enough features. It's at least worth looking at. Uh, it's a different animal, and I, I think you'll really appreciate it. Okay, just kind of wrapping up here as I drive this 4707 back around to the to the dealership. A um, couple things just to keep in mind when you guys are out shopping for a 75 horsepower tractor uh, that I. I think make a difference and, and really kind of give Massey a competitive edge. And one thing I hadn't mentioned yet, I believe we have a nicer seat. I think if you if you're shopping tractors and you look at the 75C and, and definitely if you look at the green version, you're going to see that we've got a, a much more premium seat. Uh, so I, I think you're going to really see that that there's a lot to to like about that. Um, but as I, as I drive it back, I just wanted to kind of reiterate just a few things that that really make 
the difference for me. I, I think our shuttle lever with, with more functionality to it is a, is a very, very nice uh, upgrade, you know, especially doing any hay baling or anything. Being able to just pull up and put it in neutral makes a big difference. Uh, being able to change the, the shuttle is really nice. The telescopic portion of the, t of the steering wheel, and I don't think there's another manufacturer giving you that. Everybody gives you a tail. But having that telescopic, if, if you're in this, if you're in the tractor for hours and hours on end, I think it does at some point make a difference on how you can configure this to fit you. Um, but just kind of driving the tractor, you know, having the six speeds, and, you know, to where we're not shifting as many ranges, plus the D clutch button, it's it's super handy that D clutch button is, and I, I think it just it's a premium feature that I think that makes a difference. So if you guys here again, just pay attention to that. Um, and then you know obviously i believe we got a little faster loader more hydraulic flow there's there's a lot of functionality and in another video or two we're going to be diving into that deeper before we sell this case we're going to be diving deeper into some real hardcore specs and looking at things and measuring things and I, i'm kind of interested to see how it stacks up uh but as always guys come check them out here at pr equipment you do not have to you know don't take my word for it come come sit in one drive one see one for yourself we want to be your dealer. Um, we want to, you know, we're, we're the only five-star dealer in, in really the, our Texas and the surrounding states. So if y'all are, are needing help with something, we're 100% here to help you with that. We'd love to sell you a new tractor, whatever that is. Um, and we, we, we want to earn that business. Uh, but one last thing before I let y'all go, the, uh, the, I didn't talk about this earlier. I do think that if you're looking at a Massey Ferguson 4707, it's probably worth considering is the Dyna 2 feature. And this Dyna 2 feature, uh, it's, it's basically a high-low splitter. And so I can do a kind of a rabbit turtle thing um, and kind of, I've got an extra gear. So it takes it from a 12 by 12 transmission to a 24 by 24 transmission. You also get some other cool features like brake to neutral. So when brake to neutral is on and I want to come to a stop, I just step on the brake. I don't have to I don't have to clutch it. I don't have to move the shuttle lever or anything like that. It puts it in neutral for you. Really nice feature. In this tractor, I think we're probably one of the only ones um, in this size of tractor. When you get into bigger tractors, you might see a little bit more, but it's a really nice feature in this size of tractor. You let off the brake and we're going again. Um, also the auto power button. The auto power button's pretty cool. So if, if I'm cruising down the road um, and I'm, let's say I'm in three rabbit, uh, and I shift and I just shift down here and I go to I go to four Let's make sure that's on and I go to four. It's gonna take it automatically to turtle for me It's it's kind of trying to find the best the best Configuration for the splitter to match power and speed and what you're trying to do Which is why they kind of call it auto power, right? So um, it's a pretty cool little feature so that when you're when you're even when you downshift It'll it'll kick you up to the higher gear within that, you know, the higher of the two so it's kind of split shifting right uh if, if you're familiar with the old the old you know 18 speeds and the old or i guess even 10 speeds or whatever the old uh, uh you know two and a half ton trucks uh or, or semis for that matter i'm sure they're the same but when you're split shifting you know you're kind of you're utilizing that that splitter to the best of your ability and so uh it's it's doing that automatically for you hey guys we want to be your dealer. Uh, we do these videos. We want to educate you all. We think it's worthwhile to, to take your time and, and to know what you're buying uh, and then come buy from us. Uh, I'm Nick Palmer with PR Equipment here in Currents, Texas. Keep an eye out for these other videos we're going to be doing, comparing these two tractors, like the back ends, the transmissions, the, the everything. We're going to dive deeper into these two tractors. Keep an eye out for those videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Uh, give us a call or text at 903-270-0877. We're going to do everything we can to, to, to help you out and get you in a new tractor. And, and if you want to trade something in like this this guy, uh, this old, old Tad traded in his uh, case uh, tractor. He's only had for about a year uh, to move on up to Massey because you get more with Massey. So uh, come check them out. Give us a call. If you have any questions, let's, let's work through those. And, and like I say, let's get you in a new Massey Ferguson tractor. Thanks, y'all.